So welcome back. The let's look at the most important aspect of FBA or what's potentially the most debated aspect of flux balance analysis. How do you pick this objective function? In your uh, school problem of chairs and tables, the objective function is very clear. You wanted to maximize the profit of the industry or factory or whatever, right? In this case, how do you, what is the objective function that you pick? And this is where I want you to have a more fundamental understanding of FBA and uh, um, let us let's see what that is. One obvious way to pick the objective function is based on the desired goal of the simulation. Maybe for basic exploration and probing of the solution space or to represent likely physiological objectives or to represent bioengineering design objectives. Let us just look at the last two and you can imagine what exploring the solution space is, right? You just try different objective functions to see what kind of configurations are admissible in the cell. But let us remind ourselves what we have been doing. You have a cell which takes in several metabolites, gives out some metabolites and there is a complex metabolic network inside of it. This is the metabolic network we essentially represent as S, your stoichiometric matrix. And what you do is SV equal to 0, this is not, you cannot violate this constraint, right? This is a fundamental constraint. Why? It arises from stoichiometry. You can only produce 1 mole of um, fructose from 1 mole of glucose. No other choice, right? And this is thermodynamics, irreversible and reversible reactions. And let us actually not say infinity, but typically uh, some large value, right? We know that this, uh, this has to be only in this direction and this can be in either direction reaction, right, the values. So, huh? Yes, you can have it, okay, this maybe it should be less than equal to for infinity, but, right, so it can be 0 of course. So, this is what we have so far and we said we cannot solve this system unambiguously, right? one unique solution. So, to pick one solution, we said let us now impose this objective function maximize C transpose V. What does this give you? It gives you two things when you solve, you will get the max value or what we call the max function value. This is basically C transpose into the V best and the V best which is basically your flux distribution. What can you now tell me about the uniqueness of V star and C transpose V star? Have you studied linear programming before? You may need to call in some <laughs> logic of linear programming here. It is interesting to note that this is unique, whereas this is not unique. This has major implications for everything we do with FBA and I think it is easy to understand the math of FBA, but as always in this course, what we want to understand is you know the, the ramifications that any mathematical technique that we have has for modeling any given system. So, let us look at a simple illustration of FBA. How does an FBA actually work? So, you start with a system. 
So you reconstruct a system. How do you reconstruct a system? Go back a couple of modules. Pathway databases, literature, all the hard work to essentially assemble a long list of biochemical reactions that occur within E. coli or any organism of your interest. Given this is your system, now how do you set up the, what are the next step that you would do here for flux balance analysis? So, dx by dt equals s into v. What is your stoichiometric matrix? What is going to be the size of your stoichiometric matrix? M cross. M cross. Hmm, here. What is M and what is R? M is 5. Ha, this is one reaction. Right? It is basically A plus D giving E plus B. This is how you normally write in biochemistry, right? ATP becoming ADP or something like that. So, so that mean makes it 7, right? So, you have two internal reactions V1 and V2, and you have a bunch of exchange reactions B2 to B5. Fair enough? So, the stoichiometric matrix will therefore be 5 cross 7, and it will look like this. Fair enough. So, now you can see the balance nicely. V1 is B1, which, which really makes sense, right? Sorry, um, you will find that V1, yeah, minus V1 plus B1 equal to 0, balance for A. And B is involved in 3 reactions. So, V1 minus V2 minus B2 equal to 0. Whatever flow comes in is split across these two. Right. This V2 is in turn dependent on B3, this V1 is in turn dependent on something else and so on. You will find all of this, right. But overall, because V1 also is linked to B4, V1 is also linked to uh, B5 and things like that. So, so one thing here is, it is it's a little, there is a bit of a catch here. I cannot have reversible arrows here, because if I say this is minus 5, I have to commit to one direction in the first place, right. So, here it is a reversible arrow is shown for the sake of highlighting that it is a reversible reaction, but in essence when you start even writing the stoichiometric matrix, you have to understand that B4 is in a particular direction, V5 is in a particular direction, right. So, what is B5 here? What is, this is a reaction, right, it is E on the right hand side alone which is basically to say it is something like No, so what I am saying is what was the reaction? Let us take the same reaction. I have a reaction like this. If I say V1, what is it? Is it the flux for the forward reaction or the backward reaction? So, it makes sense if I say that this is a reversible reaction with V1 as the flux, right. So, now if V1 is 5, it means B is going to C. If V1 is minus 5, it means C is going to B. Uh, side is dominant. Yeah. It does not tell you if, if a reaction is reversible or not. You just look at the picture. Yeah. So, invariably in all these reconstructions, you keep the reversibility information separate. So, you say reversibility R1, R3, R5, something like that. What are all the list of reversible reactions? Or typically, you keep a Boolean vector. It says 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, right. This means R1 is reversible, R2 is not, R3 is reversible, R4 is not, R5 is reversible, right. So, when we do the lab sessions, you will get familiar with this. Because to even fill up this column, I need to know what the reaction is. If it is reversible, I still need to know what is the forward or the backward reaction. 
right. So, you can assume that all reactions are in the forward direction and if you get a um, negative flux, it is in the reverse direction. But what do I even mean by forward direction? Is this the forward or this the backward, right? So, I need to commit to one arrow direction. So, assuming that we have this. So, here in fact, you should, uh, this should have been a minus 1, right? E should be going out, for example, right? Otherwise, you just have uh, V1 plus V5 equal to 0. So, they are going to be of opposite signs for sure, right. So, now you set up this equation dx by dt equals Sv and you say Sv equals 0. So, now you have to solve the system of equations which basically reads minus V1 plus V1 equal to 0, V1 minus V2 minus V2 equals 0, V2 plus V3 equals 0 minus V1 plus V4 equals 0 and so on. I am essentially multiplying this with this matrix multiplication and note that this is just a partition. I am trying to show up, uh, it might seem like a divided by or something, but it is a partition to show that there are some internal fluxes and there are some exchange fluxes in the same vector. So, the next step you put in other constraints from your knowledge of biology or whatever, here I have put some toy constraints. I say 0 less than equals V1 less than equals 10, minus 10 less than equals V2 less than equals 10. So, typically for any irreversible rea reversible reaction, I would have the co constraint in both directions, but for the re irreversible re reaction, it is only in one direction. What is the next step? I have assembled the constraints, yes, I have to do the optimization. So, I say my product of interest is B. So, I maximize the, the secretion of B outside this cell, how much B is coming out of this cell, right, which means maximize B2, which means maximize 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0 into this vector. I am just putting it back into the canonical form, right. So, what is the what is the canonical LP? You know, a canonical quadratic equation is Ax square plus Bx plus C equals 0, right. So, the canonical LP is minimize F transpose X such that you can even have inequalities, right. This is an equality constraint. You can have inequality constraints as well, right. This will be a proper linear program. Now, if you map it back to our system, what is A? What is B? What is X? What is F? Your objective function like biomass, which is basically your C. This is the name we gave, and, and it is useful to know these variable names as well because these are the same things that are used in the MATLAB toolbox for solving flux balance analysis problems. What is A? The equivalent of A? The stoichiometric matrix equivalent of B zero. zero zero vector. What is the size of the zero vector? R m, cross r one. m cross one. Very good. What is x? Is this clear? You want me to repeat it? I'll repeat it because this can be a little confusing. 
and it's important to fixate these ideas before we go any further which is why I dropped the discussion on objective functions and jumped back to an example trivial toy FBA problem. So we basically start with a system, we extract the stoichiometric matrix out, then we write this mass balance equation dx by dt equals sv. This is the mass balance equation. At steady state this becomes 0, right? And then we add other constraints based on our knowledge of biology, capacity, whatever and then set up the optimization problem because this is going to give us infinitely many solutions still, right? So then we set up this optimization problem and we compute the, the best v like which will give you the, the max c transpose v, this is c, c dot v, right? That is the same as just a dot product between the, these two vectors such that s v equals 0 and you see that my 0 is also bold meaning that is also a vector. This should give you a solution. So one possible solution set is this. So you have 4.857 of A coming in, 4.8 of A coming in, 5.143 of B coming in giving 10. But if you see this is just one arbitrary solution, there are many equivalent solutions you might be able to come up with. You could just have 0, 0, 0, 0, 10, 10, 10. this c, it is the objective function. I said maximize, so I said max b2 such that such that s into v equals 0, right? And what is v? v is nothing but this. So now this is your LP problem, right? This is your LP objective function. So this has to be written as some c dot v. So what is the c vector that will multiply this to give you b2? It will be 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. So now c transpose this transpose into this vector good it just seems like a, a little contrived if you are not familiar with uh, you know linear programming and linear algebra but essentially this is what it is right i set this up as my objective function of choice and i have to give my objective function as some linear combination of all these variables and that linear combination zero of all variables except b2 you always have to represent your objective function like that like some matrix matrix as some linear combination of v which is when it will remain linear programming i can come up you can say uh, you, you are very well within your uh, rights to say maximize b1 v1 plus b2 v2 this is quadratic plus b1 cube nonlinear right you can go in for any objective function right your constraints are still the same old sv equal to 0 linear constraints of course this is therefore no longer linear programming we will see examples of these. There are very interesting formulations that are non-linear programming based. Uh, there are non-linear optimization uh, based, which will give you interesting uh, results. So let's get back here. We we see that they are all. There are different possible solutions that you can have. Right? So clearly, zero 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 ten 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 is one solution, or simply five 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 is another solution. Right? Of course, this will be 10 and this will max out at 10 because that is a constraint that you have yourself 
imposed here. You said 0 less than equals v1, b1, b2 less than equals 10. So, now I want to draw your attention back to the fact that the solution is unique or the objective function value is unique whereas the possible flux distributions are many.